and welcome back, DFS family. That's right. I beat David last week by a whopping 11 points. So I am your host, Pat Mikowski. You can find me at PattyMac33 on Twitter. And I'm going to turn it over to my co-host, Mr. David Eddy. You can find him at Corporal Eddy on Twitter. Take it away, David. Well, hey there, you handsome son of a bitch. How you doing? I'm good, brother. How are you? Uh, apparently overconfident is how I'm doing. I, I was uh, I was pretty confident in my in my lineup last week, um, but I've actually got it pulled up this time so we can compare and contrast because I felt pretty good, man. I was actually winning um, thousands of dollars um, at halftime of the 1 p.m. games, and then my Teddy Bridgewater cash lineups all went to shit because he didn't do anything in the second half of the game, and Mahomes and company, which was my humongous four five-man stacks, for GPPs or, or MMEs, however you want to put it, um, he didn't do anything in the second half, so I, I I end up just barely losing a little bit. But the difference in our two lineups basically um, was I did end up for cash. I, I had to as a free square. I end up playing your guy um, Zacchaeus from the uh, Falcons, and you had played Robbie Anderson. So there's a 21 point difference right there. So yep, that was it. So that was about the difference between the two of ours. Um, what well, was right there? So so congratulations to you, my friend. Um, I guess I want to say I'm going to kick your ass this week, but I I guess I'll just keep it on the DL until it happens. Yeah, that that one week winning streak that you had uh, isn't it, really anything to write home about. Um, so. It was pretty impressive. It it's it <laughs> it is my longest winning streak of the year. Thank you very much. Yeah, it, so far it is. Maybe you can build on that. <laughs> maybe. Maybe I'll tie it this week. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, so before we get started, go ahead and do us a quick little favor. Uh, hit that like button. And if you enjoy this podcast, then do yourself a little favor uh, and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to keep a leg up on all of your buddies, uh, as always, swing over to fantasysixpack.net to check out a whole bunch of great content. Patrick, since you are the um, undisputed winner last week, why don't you go ahead and give us your um, gospel, your core play for this coming up week six? Yeah, man. It's, uh, you know, I'm going to go back to the well on this one. It was a little bit dry last week, not quite the, uh, the outcome that I had hoped for or predicted. I had this guy in quite a few of my lineups. Um, but you know, I'm going to go two weeks in a row. I'm going to go back to my gospel, James Robinson, 6,800 bucks lions at the Jags. Uh, you know, like I said, bad week, but never fear that running back hangover cure is here. The Detroit football lions roll into town, giving up a league worst 148 yards a game over five and a half yards of carry. Uh, opposing running backs racking up almost 28 fantasy points a game. Uh, you know, the Motor City Kitties, man. I really like this kid's upside and his price tag. Um, you know, not to mention he gets involved in the passing game. Uh, no matter the game plan, he's going to be in it. I like me some James Robinson this weekend again. Yeah, I, I think that's a good one. I think he's going to be very highly owned, uh, probably reasonably um, so. But I'm going to tell you, my 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 gospel this week is um, only $200 more. So if you like some James Robinson, then you better damn well love some Mike Davis. So like I said, 7K coming in uh, Panthers versus the Bears. And I, I just cannot believe that this guy is still at just 7K with what he's been doing. Listen. This is really, really simple for me this week. There are not many plays that I'm in love with at all for week six, but this is one of them. So it's simple, man. I'm going to be playing a lot of Mike Davis. I, I don't think I need to say any more. Yeah, he's been pretty impressive, uh, you know, in McCaffrey's uh, absence. And, you know, I think that's a lot of the reason why. They're going to just take their time with Christian. You're going to let that ankle heal up. Mike Davis is going to continue to get the rock. Yeah, I, so, I think technically he comes off the IR this week. Now, I haven't heard a single peep about him playing at all. But, um, 
I mean, I guess that would change things, but until that until that happens, Mike Davis for me this week. Uh, what about the your devil this week, the guy that uh, you're fading? Yeah, I'm going to stick at the running back position here. Uh, I'm going to fade the devil, Miles Sanders, $6,600. Ravens at the Eagles. Let's not get too excited about his big week last week, folks. He finally got it going, but he runs into a Ravens rush defense that's given up only 3.6 yards of carry this year. 73 yards a game to opposing running backs and has only yielded one single rushing touchdown on the ground. Uh, I'm going to stay far, far away from Mr. Sanders. Uh, that runs uh, Ravens run defense is pretty freaking stout, man. Yeah, he was pretty surprising last week. And if you just look at the numbers, I think he had, what, 80 yards rushing and, and two touchdowns, but... Um... 74 yards of that, I think, was on one big long play. So um, right. scratch that, which isn't fair to do, but scratch that, and he had, you know, a 10-yard day, basically. So, yeah, um, which is less than a yard of carry, I think, because he only carried the ball 11 times, I think, yeah. is what I saw. So. Um, I don't know that I'm going to completely fade him. I think he'll be in my player pool this week, just just even as a little bit of a contrarian play. But I don't like his price tag. $6,600 is pretty much the same as you know our two gospels uh right so you know i don't think i'm gonna have much of him but i don't think i'm gonna take him out of my player pool um there's not a whole lot going on in that philadelphia offense so um i don't assume that they're going to get shut out and someone's gonna have to score and he's just as good of a bet as anybody but yeah he's gonna be very low owned i fading him is not even a bad move um I think a much more popular guy is uh, who my devil is going to be this week, a guy that is going to have pretty high ownership, but I'm just not going to touch. And that's our good old friend from the Chicago Bears, David Montgomery, going up against the run funnel uh, from the Carolina Panthers. So this is a very, very juicy matchup uh, for the Bears' uh, running game this week. Now add in that Tariq Cohen is out, and Montgomery should get most, if not all, of the work in that backfield. The problem is, Patrick, he sucks. He sucks, man. <laughs> so, listen, I, like I said, I think he's going to be one of the highest-owned players on the slate. And if I do end up putting him in my player pool, which is probable, I'm definitely going to cap his exposure to, you know, 10, or, you know, 5, 10% or so, somewhere in that neighborhood, maybe 15 but. Um, it's going to be low just in case, you know, something crazy happens and I do get to slip him in there. Um, but not playing him is going to be probably my biggest leverage play of the week because he's going to be so highly owned, I think. Because he really is in a good position. He just sucks. All right, next up, uh, your Archangel, Patrick. Who is your pivot of the week? Uh, yeah, so a Sparty. Ugh. Kirk Cousins, sixty-one hundred bucks. Dirty Birds at the Vikings. Now we all know that Captain Kirk's been struggling this year. Um, you know, I'm pivoting towards Cousins because I feel like Matt Ryan's going to be relatively highly owned, um, and that new head coach—they're going to be calling some pass plays. They're going to be moving the ball down the field. Uh, they're going to air it out this game. So lots of passing. Uh, Minnesota's pass defense isn't exactly uh, top-notch. They're in the bottom 10 in just about every category um, in the league. And for Cousins, though, you know, he gets a nice juicy little matchup going up against Atlanta's league-worst pass defense. Over 340 yards a game, three touchdowns a game to opposing QBs. 35 fantasy points a game, yada, 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 on and on and on. Uh, this is going to be one of my top stacking lineups this weekend. Uh, Cousins, albeit doesn't look like he's going to have any Delvin Cook, I think he's going to go off. So I've got Cousins as my archangel this week. What do you think, David? Yeah, I actually think he's going to be pretty highly owned. I think without question he'll be top five owned quarterback, probably, probably top three. Um, wouldn't even surprise me if he's the top-owned quarterback. Um, I don't think that 
Cook being out and Madison replacing him hurts Cousins at all. It might actually help him. Um, but I really think that Madison is pretty damn good, and it's not a you know precipitous drop to you know to to him from Cook. Um, but yeah, I really like stacking him and Thielen. Uh, this week for sure and then I think the obvious run back is with Ridley so yeah I'm definitely going to have probably a handful of lineups that are you know built around that particular game but more so on the cousin side so yeah completely agree with you now for me um, my archangel guy I'm gonna I think pivot to um, in in instances is gonna be a guy that I feel like I I probably like more than most, maybe, because I feel like I talk about him, like, every couple weeks. Uh, but I'm going Terry McLaurin. Uh, it's only 5700 bucks. Plays for that stupid football team uh, going up against the Giants. Now, if you look last week, McLaurin put up a paltry. That's right, I say again, a paltry three catches for 26 yards last week against the Rams. Now, of course, that's with, you know, Jalen Ramsey shadowing him. So take that with a grain of salt. But... You know, you combine that with the fact that this is going to be a pretty low-scoring game. I mean, neither one of those teams are anything to write home about. I don't even think Daniel Jones has thrown a touchdown pass in four weeks, I think it is. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, but I think McLaurin's going to get overlooked this week. Um, but again, like I said before, um, for the last one here, someone's got to score. Um, and I think that, you know, as his at his price tag, I should say, um, I think that, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna take a few chances with McLaurin. He's the one kind of sure bet uh, in that entire game. And, you know, you can save a little bit of dough with that 5700 bucks. He's not going to break the slate for you, but uh, I think he's a pretty good value. Now, let's go ahead and sneak over to the heresy play there, Patrick. What's your contrarian play for the week? Yeah, I feel like I'm... Very anti NFC North this week, but uh, I'm going with Mr. Rogers. Uh, Seventy five hundred bucks. The Fudge Packers against the uh, Buccaneers. Uh, perfect matchup when you look at it from a certain perspective. Uh, you know, Tampa's only given up fifteen, about fifteen fantasy points a game. A little over two hundred sixty yards, touchdown and a half a game to opposing QBs. They've got 17 sacks and nine takeaways on the season. I think for the 7,500 price tag that there are better, cheaper options at quarterback. For me, there's real no reason at all to even consider Rodgers in this matchup. Um, So I don't think that many others are going to either. Um, Mr. Rodgers appears to be getting his favorite target back in Devontae Adams. Um, and I know Dave is going to tell me one way or another not to do it, but I'm probably going to run some Rogers, Adams, and Jones stacks out there. Uh, see if I can't sneak my way into some money. Uh, Rogers has just been way too good this year with way too little to work with. Um, I got him against the Bucks. He's going to outdo a touchdown Tom. Patrick, what the hell are you thinking? <laughs> Listen, I, told you, I, li- I like to go off the wall. I'm crazy. Listen, I have zero problem with an Aaron Rodgers play this week. A um, little bit pricey, but um, going against that Bucks team and what could be a pretty high-scoring game, uh, I think stacking him with, with Adams is, is a no-brainer. Um, I don't know how much I like stacking him with Jones. Um, that was the part I knew I'd get you with. Yeah, now it's not, and it's not that I don't like Jones, um, and it's not that he doesn't, you know, get involved in the passing game. In all, in all honesty, it's I think that that's just too common of a stack to go with. Um, you know, everyone's going to go Rodgers and Adams if they're going to throw a third guy in there. I think most people would throw Jones in there, and that's exactly the reason that I would actually pivot from Jones, and I would go to that tight end, man. I would. I would go ahead and go Robert Tanyan. I knew you'd go yeah. towards that tight end. Yep, Robert Tanyan, man. He has put up 10, 16, and 33 points uh, in the yeah, last so three awesome. games. It's like he's Rogers' favorite target. Yeah, so I know Adams coming back will definitely you know, change the targets that, that he ends up getting. Um, 
But, I mean, even to put up those points, he's only done it on three, five, and six targets. So, it's not like he's getting a ton of volume. He's just catching every damn thing. So, um, Rodgers, Adams, and some Tanya, and you can run that back with Mike Evans. Yeah, I, I, I like it. It's going to be pricey. But, um, you know, I had a very pricey Mahomes, Hill, Kelsey, and Waller big game stat going last week, and that won me a good chunk of change. So, um, yeah, I can get behind that, man. Um, for me, I'm going to, I guess, technically spend more money because if you think about just the value per dollar, um, I think that my contrarian play this week is, is actually more expensive, um, just at a different position. So $6,600 for your boy Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, the Steeler going up there against the Brownies. Now, Juju is the name that I think has been forgotten on the Steelers team. Uh, there was an early season break. 